Welcome to another edition of I Am AAPC, where we follow the journeys of our AAPC members and, and learn about um, how they made their way into their healthcare careers. Today, we have Sarah Reagan with us. Sarah, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me today. You bet. Sarah and I, um, we've known each other uh, through the AAPC social media channels, um, the Facebook group and yes. our groups. And then we met at, because you spoke at our Charleston Regional Conference. I did. I had such a great time. And it was very unique. If you ever have a chance to see to see or hear Sarah speak, um, it, she was amazing. She had her husband up with her and they spoke about um, coding for truckers. That's right. It was health conditions of the American trucker. Okay. And that was awesome. And it was interesting even for... Um, for me, who is not a coder, but just to see the, the health issues that a trucker may have and how you would apply your expertise to that. No, uh, you know, it was it was really helpful because my husband has been a trucker for over 20 years and now he actually teaches people how to drive semi trucks, which is something I can't even wrap my mind around. And it just seemed like a natural thing to talk about. And I, I think that's something that's really important is that when you do speak professionally, virtually, or in person, it helps to really know your subject. And that's something that I know a lot about because I know him. So it, it came very naturally, although I was so nervous <laughs> when I was there in Charleston. That I, I think you even pulled me aside and told me to breathe. <laughs> I, must have, I must have looked like I was about to pass out. I was so nervous. But um, once I got up there, it just all came together and I feel like it went really well. And we got some good ratings too. I was very pleased with it. It was a lot of fun. And I want to just go back to the start of your career right. and learn about that. So um, how long have you been doing this for Sarah? All right, so it's, you know, it's a long story. I've been a certified coder only for seven years since 2014. Wow. But my career kind of goes way, way back. Um, I actually became a medical assistant first and I was clinical and I liked it. And then I had a job interview at a hospital one time in Orlando and I went to the hospital and the hospital was huge and I got lost and I missed my interview and I was really just down on myself. I had three little kids to take care of and I really wanted that job. And I was you know, mad at myself for getting lost because I do that all the time. I have no sense of direction. And, uh, while I was wandering around the hospital feeling sorry for myself, I ran into a job fair for patient financial services. And I thought to myself, well, I already missed my interview. What's the worst thing that could happen? And they hired me. <laughs> it was almost like fate. It really, really was. I didn't know anything about patient financial services. I knew nothing about coding. I really didn't know anything about billing, but I can spell really well and I can type. So that's why they hired me and I ended up working in the registration department and then I started move, uh, working in prior authorizations and that's where I learned about coding. They were always asking me what's the diagnosis code, what's the CPT code, and I'm like, what are these? So I started figuring them out and I had a better rate of getting authorizations than anyone else on my team because I started looking these things up and then my supervisor said, wow, you're good at this. You ought to be a coder. And I said, what's a coder? So we looked it up and I was like, oh, that looks good. They paid for it. And literally I went to school and that's how it all happened. Well, how long did you have that first job for before you moved over into coding? 14 years. Wow. I worked, yes, I did it for 14 years. Uh, I have to admit I had stage fright. I didn't want to take that test. I was terrified of it and I put it off for a really, really long time. And uh, my husband, actually, my, you know, my, my inspiration for my trucker, my trucker presentation said, Sarah, why are you putting this off? Go take that test. And I went ahead and, and did it. And I remember he bought me the newest set of code books for my birthday. That was my birthday gift. He bought them for me. Um, my birthday is in May. And I studied uh, and I took the test in September and passed. <laughs> All right. Now, tell us about that exam preparation experience. And did your, I guess, your work that you'd previously done probably help 
give you some background. It definitely helped a lot because when I was doing prior authorizations, I was in charge of surgeries. And as you know, um, the CBC exam is pretty heavy on surgeries. So I felt very comfortable with it. I was uh, very confident in, in uh, what I could do. I would, I would have to say that um, the best thing, I think, when you're taking your CPC exam is to eliminate the obviously wrong first. And that way you don't have to read all of that. Um, and I think that that really has helped me on my, on my journey. I, let me see. I actually wrote these things down. Don't try to memorize codes. Mm. That's, that's another big one. Um, it's better to know your guidelines and know how to literally use the books and know where things are than having to memorize things. Uh, it's, it's sort of like, you know, when you're in your garage and you know what tool you need to use. It's the same concept. I had a tool that I was using, which was my book, and I knew how to use it. You know, I didn't take the book and put it on my head. <laughs> you know, I flipped it open and I knew where things were. And that's so important to know your book and to write your notes in there and and, and be very, very, by the time I took my exam in September, my book looked like I'd run it over with a truck. It was, it was kind of a mess, but uh, it, it worked out great for me. And, um, you know, like, like they always say, know your guidelines, which, you know, I knew my guidelines. And then also don't leave anything blank. You know, um, it's A through D. And so even if you just pick one, you've got a 25% chance of being right. And I, that's better than zero. So yes. You know, at the very end, if, if you're really struggling, you know, it's best to uh, fill those in and hope for the very best. I, I've seen some talk about people starting at the back and then working their way to the front. I did not do that. I didn't want to lose track. So I literally just started with one and I ended at 150. I did not go back and forth at all. I okay. was I, I didn't want to lose my spot. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, thinking about your exam preparation, did you uh, did you go to a technical school or the APC online courses? How did you prepare? Uh, I actually uh, obtained my two year degree from Herzing University. Uh, the the uh, hospital that I worked for paid for it, and so that's what they were willing to pay for. So that awesome. is what I use. But you know, I've I've seen so many people have great luck with with you know AAPC and other schools. So it didn't have to be my experience, yeah. but I yeah. have to say, I, I did love my experience there. I, okay. it, was, it was an online school, which was so important to me because at the time I was working full-time and I had three young children yeah. and you know, I studied after I put them to bed. Hmm. What was the most difficult section or a part, uh, most difficult part of your whole uh, preparation experience. E and M. It's always E and M, isn't it? That seems to be the universal one. Uh, I definitely have a much better handle on it now. In fact, I recently I, I love Facebook memories. I don't know if you ever play around with yeah. those, but I recently saw something about me complaining about six or seven years ago about how stupid E and M was, and I was never going to master it. And then I ended up getting a job uh, working in family practice, and it was all I did. <laughs> <laughs> you mastered it. I did. I, I feel very comfortable with it now, and especially with the changes that just recently happened. But I, I looked back at that and I just kind of snickered. I was like, yeah, Sarah, you really showed yourself there. <laughs> <laughs> you, you never say never. Absolutely. Never say never. Because if somebody, you know, I actually remember another thing when I was going to college, they make you take a class on public speaking. And I remember telling my husband and my best friend that that was the dumbest class I'd ever taken because I was going to school to be a coder and I was never going to speak in public. I was wrong. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. You, yeah. Completely wrong. <laughs> completely wrong. I had no idea. I mean, here yeah. I am now talking to you, which is comfortable and natural, <laughs> but you know, going to health con, that was huge. And, and now I do virtual speaking and I've done it all over the country and I don't even know who I am sometimes. <laughs> oh, that's the thing is, uh, I love that you're open to the possibilities and you don't let fear stop you. No, no. And um, I, I have let fear stop me in the past. And that's why it took me a few years before I felt brave enough to take that CPC. But, oh, I keep thinking to myself, if only I'd done it sooner, you know, things could have been different. I mean, you can't live in the yeah. past and you can't change anything, but you sure can learn from it. So Yes. I have learned that even when I'm terrified of something, it probably means I should do it. Yes. Except for skydiving. I'm not doing that. <laughs> no skydiving. Noted. No yes. <laughs> skydiving. No. <laughs> uh, well, well, Sarah, um, after you passed your CPC exam, what you did on your first try, 
I did my first try, yes. Uh, did you apply for a coding job right after that or, or had you already transitioned to, to a coding position? Tell me about that. I applied for um, coding a coding job right after that. And honestly, it took me a while. Uh, let me see, I passed in September of 2014 and I didn't get my first coding job until July of 2015, the next year. So it took wow. some time. Okay. But, you know, I just, I just kept applying. I just, you know, I, I went to the um, AAPC. Uh, for, uh, they weren't yeah. virtual back then. Okay. Yeah. So I went to the monthly meetings. Yes. And Local chapter meetings. What, that is what made the absolute difference was going to those meetings and showing up and, you know, hi, I'm Sarah. Hi, I'm Sarah. Um, it's hard to do that. It's really hard, especially coding, you know, coding. We seem to attract a lot of introverts. <laughs> and <laughs> you're laughing because you know I'm I'm right. Uh, and it's so easy to go to those meetings and sit in a corner with your drink and get your CEU and shut up and never say a word to anyone. But you're doing yourself such a disservice by yes. doing that. And even though I was terrified because I'm an introvert, I know sometimes it's hard to believe, but I am. I walked around and I talked to as many people as who didn't look like they wanted to hurt me, basically. <laughs> I, I, I talked to everyone and I started memorizing people's names and I started saying, you know, oh, hey, I remember when you were here last time, you had that beautiful bag or, or you know, hey, you were talking about, you know, your husband and how was he doing? And I literally, I probably annoyed a lot of people. I don't know, but I wanted them to know who I was because I wanted to work my way up and it made a huge difference. And that's how I, pretty sure how I got my first job. Well, the um, you worked at this previous facility who kind of gave you a path towards coding. Um, so that first coding job was not with that facility? No, actually. And, and it, it hurt my feelings at the time because, you know, I get in my feelings every now and then. <laughs> but I went through all of that. They paid for me to go to school and then they wouldn't take me into their coding department because I had no uh, no experience. And I was like, that makes no sense. You just paid yeah. for me to do this. <laughs> we just went through all of this. And... We just did this together and you paid for it and you won't let me. And, and so I ended up leaving. Um, it, 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 it hurt because I love them. I'm still friends with a lot of people uh, that I worked with there. You know, no harm, no foul. I've, I've moved on. I wish them nothing but the best. Yep. So they, they gave me the tools I needed to move up. And I appreciate yes. it. You know, Sarah, I don't know if you saw this post recently in the AAPC Facebook group. Um, someone was expressing frustration, saying, I've applied to countless numbers of, um, of jobs. And I think there is the impression, and this does some happen occasionally, where you can just sit behind your computer and fill out every application for a position. But that's rare, I it is. think. I would say it's rare. Um, and doing you know, what you it's did so is... Hard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, doing what you did, I, I think, is the right path. Just making those relationships. I think it really is a, definitely a relationship situation. I mean, by the time I had my interview with my first coding job, they already knew who I was because they had seen me at the meetings, and it really helps. I, I, I think it helped too. Plus, and I also wrote a an actual handwritten thank you card when I left oh, wow. after my interview. I did do that. So personalized. Um, as much I, as you I did. Can. Yes, I, I got the address. Well, obviously, because this was, again, before everything was Zoom. Yeah. And after the address, um, I sent it to, to my uh, interviewer and thanked her for a lovely time. And I, I hope I'm the one that you choose. And sure enough, I was. And wow. she told me later on that it was that handwritten note that pushed me over the edge. No one else did it. Wow. wow. And we may have a viewer watching right now who's, who may be saying, well, I live in a rural area and I don't, mm -hmm. my closest chapter is 200 miles away, but you mentioned that uh, many APC chapter meetings are now virtual. So there's yes. still the opportunity to network. Absolutely. There is. I think it's, it's honestly, it's easier than ever to network. I actually have used the AAPC website to manipulate my email. So well, manipulate is probably not the right word, but I have it. So that way I get notifications from almost every single chapter in Florida. That's where I live. I'm in Florida. And um, I get almost every single one because I literally go to as many as I possibly can and introduce myself to people. I'm not currently looking for work, but you know, maybe I'll hear about a position 
and I will say, hey, you know, I know you're looking for a GYN and I know a GYN person who's looking for a job. I will pass that information on. So I've always kind of got something going on in the back of my head where even though I'm not personally looking, I know so many people who are. Yes. And I keep that, I keep that in mind. It's fascinating because we are a huge organization, over 200,000 members, yet it feels very small at the same time. It's easy to, um, to reach out and make connections with other members. Um, and you, uh, on one hand, um, it, that's an amazing thing, but on the other, you need to be careful and manage your reputation well, especially oh, yes. online. Oh, yes. I, I'm very careful about what I post, um, both on my personal, well, I don't, I, I have just my personal page, but when I'm posting in AAPC, I remember that I'm posting not only as a member of AAPC, but uh, I'm also an employee of a company, and I know that they have people on there too, so and I, I kind of try to keep it in mind where I'm like, would my mother wash my mouth out if she saw what I'm writing? <laughs> and if she, because she still will. <laughs> my mother doesn't play. So um, if I feel like what I'm saying is something that I would offend my mom, I don't say it. Yeah. So that's kind of, yeah. that's kind of like my, my rule of thumb. Yeah. Now, are you still in that first position? You've, you've been no. doing this seven years? Okay, no. No, I've, I've moved around a little bit. Um, I ended up, getting another interview again. It was because of the AAPC. I was on stage where we have our meetings for Daytona Beach and I was doing something. I was introducing someone. I'm not quite sure what happened, but the next day I got a phone call saying, hey, um, we have this position open and we'd like for you to apply. And I thought, I don't remember applying here, but I'm like, why not? So I went to the interview and it ended up being a 50% raise. Wow. That's really big. And so I thought, that sounds good. And I remember even thinking to myself, I'm like, I don't remember applying here. And it turns out that the hiring manager was there getting her CEUs, thought I was funny and pulled me in. Oh. That was it. Wow. That was it. And so I spent five years there. I had a wonderful five years. Um, but then the job that I'm at now offered me more flexibility to work from home. I, I was driving back and forth for the last five years. And I was ready to start working from home. And that's why I ended up leaving. Um, no, again, no hard feelings. Learned so much. Learned a new uh, specialty. I became a family practice coder. Love it. And now I'm in risk adjustment. So I'm just wow. kind of here gathering as much as I can. Well, as you jump from one specialty to the next, is it like you're starting all over again with those butterflies in your stomach thinking, oh, yes. I know nothing about this. Here we go. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I mean... I, I mean, I've only been at my new position now. I'm coming up on four months. So I'm still, I still feel like the new girl, but uh, I'm learning so much and I just want to be open to the experience that they're, they're giving me and giving me the opportunity, you know, number one, to work from home and have flexible hours. I'm like, thank you so much. That means a lot to me. And I'm going to do my best for you. And I'm going to learn this new specialty to the best of my ability. Yes, yes. Now we have our core credentials, like you have your CPC and we have mm -hmm. CPB and CIC, and we also have um, specialty credentials and you're jumping around in these specialties. And I make that sound like you're hopping all the time, which you're, you're not, but um, you've experienced different specialties. Um, where, where do your certifications um, fall in your life? Um, are you, are you, do you have your CPC and other certifications? I do. I have five wow. certifications right now. I know, I know. I started off with the CPC and I got that in 2014. Okay. And then I soaked up as much knowledge as I could. I was a new coder. Even though I have lots of experience in the medical field itself, I was a new coder. So I soaked up as much information as I could. Then in, um, in 2019, um, my daughter died. And I was just trying to find something to do to keep myself occupied, you know, through grieving. And I became the president of my chapter because <laughs> that'll keep you busy. Yes. Right. And then the pandemic happened and everything shut down. But what I had were knowledge and books. And I took three certification exams in 2020. Oh, it man. kept me busy. Wow. So I obtained my CPMA, which is the medical auditor. Okay. I obtained my CRC, which is the risk adjustment. And then I also got the CFPC, which is family practice. Okay. 
Okay. Then I took advantage of the free AAPC that you guys did for us. And I ordered the uh, information for COC. I didn't take that till the next year though. I thought my husband was going to kill me if I did one more <laughs> certification. Oh, so, so the COC was the first round of free AAPC, not this yes. past summer, but summer of 2020. That's correct. But I didn't okay. take the exam until 2021. I just, I was taking my time studying it. Um, again, I went back to my first thing, which was surgery. I did all those authorizations back in the day and that knowledge just came rushing right back. And wow. even though I've never done surgery coding, that was the highest score I've ever gotten. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, what, okay. I'll yeah. take it. Thank yeah. you. Well, it's all Good of that education. experience over, right. over the years now is paying off. It is. It is. So I, I was very, very blessed to be able to take advantage of that, um, the education that you guys offered. And that's what I did. So now I'm, I'm up to five. I'm trying to decide what I'm doing next. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I uh, you had mentioned about um, speaking at local chapters. And I know there there are those who think I could never do that or I have no desire for that. But um, I, I think even as a um, new student or a recently certified coder, a CPCA, I think those opportunities are out there to do that as well. And when you put yourself out in front of people, um, you're showing, um, you're sh I mean, you're showing that you're willing to learn because teachers are, yes. I have to learn the most to be prepared, but um, just, sure, yeah. just, just a, a great opportunity to put yourself out there and you never know where that may lead. And I, I recently spoke with someone else who said that they um, they were speaking and someone in the audience saw what they're and loved what they're presenting about and how they presented and um, offered them a position. And uh, this those opportunities are out there if you put yourself out there. Right, and again, if you can push past a little bit of the introversion, I had to push past it. I. This doesn't come naturally to me. Uh, I, I really have to prepare for it. And when I'm done, I feel like I've, I've got to go home and put my feet up and get a cup of coffee. <laughs> and just, I, I, I have to just kind of chill out and go, okay. Yeah. Yes. And then I do it again and I do it again and I just keep doing it. But I, I've tur it turns out that public speaking and teaching, I love it. And I didn't know. I had no idea that I loved it until I did it. I love that you talked about preparation and I think uh, our certified members know that because you have to prepare so well for the exam mm -hmm. and there's there's confidence uh, there can be confidence and peace when you are pre are prepared to the best of your abilities and that um, that includes when you present in front of others. Oh yes I mean I, I don't just walk in and hope for the best I mean I I and I've also learned too certain things that that make it easier. Like like when I was putting together my first PowerPoint, which was the trucker one, I actually misjudged how long it was. I thought to myself, we'll barely do an hour. We ended up doing almost two. Wow. Because, you know, and of course it's because my husband's on the chatty side. But <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, you you know, it turns out I, I've learned how to put powerpoints together and i know how long each slide takes whereas before i didn't know that that was a skill i had to learn mm -hmm. and it, it's come in very very handy and you know but preparing for it and now understanding how that works it, it makes a huge difference and i'm better prepared for it now than i was when i started this gosh almost two years ago wow wow now you mentioned that uh your career has taken you into a work from home position Tell me about that experience. Is it uh, was it more challenging, and did it take time to get used to working from home? Um, do you enjoy it? And what what advice do you have for those who seek for that opportunity? I absolutely love working from home. Um, you know, I live near the Orlando Daytona Beach metro area. Traffic is awful. I don't miss it at all. Uh, I do miss seeing people. Yes, but um, you know, I try to do as many networking events as I possibly can. And, um, you know, I have to say, I, I try to stay on a regular schedule and I do get dressed. I'm not one of those people that work in my pajamas. I know people joke about that all the time. I can't do it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I start to, I start yawning and start, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah. and then I don't get in that correct frame of mind, at least for me. If you can, more power to you. I'm not that person. Uh, I also like listening to music while I work. I'm not a fan of watching TV or watching movies because I'll start watching that screen instead of paying attention to my charts. So yes. I don't do that. 
but I like a huge variety of music. Uh, a lot of times when I'm working, I have a chihuahua in my lap. That's probably the best part of my day. And I know my <laughs> dog really loves that I'm working from home now. She's a, yeah. she's a huge fan. <laughs> she's a huge fan. And uh, actually, we just had a, a networking event where I work, and we were all supposed to dress up with crazy sweaters, crazy Christmas sweaters. And it's Florida. I don't own a crazy Christmas sweater, but I threw on a uh, a Christmas t-shirt, but I dressed up my dog and I think I won. <laughs> oh, funny. That is so Every, funny. Everyone loves the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. So it hasn't been, um, it hasn't been a big learning curve for you. You've, you've handled that pretty well. It sounds like. Yes. I, I I'm very self-disciplined. I'm not one of those people that needs somebody to stand over me to tell me what to do. Uh, I, I've, I saw a joke one time that says, that if you give me an internet connection and a pot of coffee, I'll get anything done that you want. And I am definitely one of those people. Um, I'll, I'll just get it done. You don't need yeah. to worry about me. Yeah. Well, just um, knowing you, Sarah, I, I see um, I see an educator. I see a manager. Do you have aspirations for those sorts of things? You know, I'm not so sure I want to be a manager but I definitely love teaching. Education, I think, is definitely where I, I should be. I, I love it. Uh, I've actually been thinking about becoming uh, certified through the AAPC and becoming an instructor. Uh, I, I'm team AAPC all the way. And, uh, you know, I'm invested in you guys so much. And, you know, if I hadn't become part of the AAPC, I wouldn't be where I am now. So I'm I think that's where I'm probably going to end up in, okay. in education more than management. All right. Well, you're still young and you've got a lot of time to figure it out. <laughs> I do. And thank you for saying I'm young. I appreciate yeah, that. <laughs> you, you <bet. laughs> well, uh, what, what tips you, you offered some tips to, um, to students who are preparing for the exam. Um, what other tips might you have for someone who, well, let's start with this, with someone who they're watching they mm -hmm. are not sure if this is the right path for them. Um, uh, how, how would they know what kind of traits might they have and what kind of encouragement would you give them? I would definitely say the very first thing is being able to sit and read all day. If you're not comfortable reading all day long, this is probably not the right spot for you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've had some people tell me that they, they don't like to sit you know on their bottoms all day and i'm like well if if you get a standing desk this might work out but um you know being stationary and being comfortable you know reading just i i just i constantly harp on the reading comprehension if reading is difficult for you this is not going to work out hmm. just just being honest about it yeah um also um being okay with being alone some people are not okay with it my husband could never do this job because he loves to talk to people. He, he, he thrives on being with people all day long where it, it drains me. Hmm. So, you know, knowing, you know, what kind of a personality that you have and what drives you and what, you know, really just makes you happy is super important. And also I would say if your only reason for getting into coding is working from home, it's still, it's probably not the right fit because it's so much more than that. It's not just data entry. Um, and it, it's, it's just really, really important to know that it's not just, you know, clicking a mouse and everything. I'm reading things to make sure that they're legal. I'm making sure that this is correct before it gets sent out to an insurance company. I want to make sure that this patient's, you know, chart is, is, is okay and that I'm not going to cause them harm in the future. I mean, it, it's just so much more than, you know, click, click, click. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And um, one, one common theme that I've seen is that coders are perpetual learners. There's the industry is always changing. Healthcare mm -hmm. rules and laws are always changing. And you guys have to stay on top of that. I love that part. Yeah. I love learning. Uh, I, I love reading. I love listening to people, you know, when I went to HealthCon, I was so stoked to be meeting all of these people that I've read all of their articles in the healthcare business monthly. I'm like, I was like, Whoa! you know, yeah, yeah. I, I was fangirling really, really hard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, but it was, it was just, 
such a great opportunity to learn and to network. And I, I definitely had a, had such a great time. I know I keep talking about it, but I loved it. Yeah. And, um, you know, so if you're, if, if you're the kind of person that likes to say, well, we didn't do it like that 10 years ago. Well, again, this might not be right because yes. things change all the time. Yes. You know, it's one thing to be an APC member and, um, have your certification and be a part of the organization, but I really don't feel like you catch the complete essence until you've been to an AAPC conference. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm so glad I went, really glad I went, and I hope it's not my last one. Yes, well, I'm counting on it not being your last one because I enjoyed hanging out with you so much, <laughs> and it, that's one thing that I love is I see, you know, really you become friends online in the Facebook group and we get to know people and to actually see people in the flesh that you respect and see them support others. It, it is the best thing. I agree. I'm, I, I can't wait to do it again. All right. Well, Sarah, any, um, any final words as we wrap it up today? Ooh, final words. Yes. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think. So, I mean, I, I said a lot of words today. Yeah. Okay. Um, how about that? Oh, go ahead. You go. I was just thinking, I was like, make sure that you um, are attending your virtual um, uh, chapter meetings as much as you can. And if you are able to please consider proctoring or becoming an officer and keep your local chapter alive. Definitely. Uh, I've spoken to a couple of uh, chapters throughout the course of the year and especially beginning in August all the way up until now all I keep hearing is we're about to close we're going to close and I, I hate hearing that and I'm like we need you guys to step up we really do it really doesn't take that much time per month it really doesn't and it pays it, it'll pay you back so much more yes yes and um I I absolutely believe that you know you put out that energy into the local chapter Mm -hmm. And, um, and you, you become a pillar, you know, th that whole chapter presidency becomes a pillar and, and a resource for that whole coding community in your region. Yeah, I, I agree. So if, if you can, even if you can't be an officer, I understand, you know, when my kids were younger, I probably wouldn't have done it. I, I get that, you know, mine are older now. So I, I get to do things that I wasn't doing 15 years ago. But can you proctor one or two exams a year, especially now that they're only four hours? Yes. It's, you know, it's, it's not that big of a time commitment. And honestly, it's, I get a lot done in that four, well, it's five hours. Now I'm actually proctoring on Saturday. Oh boy. <laughs> I am. It's my last one. And I think this is my eighth one this year, seven or eight. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. I've done a lot. So um, we were, me and uh, the other proctor were like, four hours how can we get a hold of that <laughs> well it's not it's not going to be this saturday <laughs> oh boy oh boy hey real real quick um rapid fire we've talked we've been all business here mm -hmm. so tell me real quick your three top hobbies what what does sarah like to do when she's not coding i i have a bicycle uh and i love to ride my bike i also um i go fishing you know i live 15 minutes away from the beach. So I, my husband and I are, we go fishing a lot. He prefers um, lake fishing. I prefer surf fishing. Um, I win a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, and um, the other thing I probably enjoy doing the most is I love walking up and down the beach and collecting really interesting looking shells. Oh, and cool. I, I, um, I have them in jars all over the house. I just think they're beautiful. Yeah. Although if you think about it, they're really just corpses, but I don't think <laughs> Um, so I have corpses all over my house. <laughs> yes, ooh, that's kind of creepy, Sarah. <laughs> yeah, you don't think about it that way, yeah, but really, yeah. I'm like, yeah, they're kind of corpses. Oh, that's but funny. They're, they're pretty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so if you have a fascinating shell, bring it to one of our conferences and we'll find out where Sarah's going to be and um, share it with her. I like that. Okay, I'm going to go look through my shells. <laughs> all right. Okay, Sarah, thanks so much for doing this and being with us. You hang tight for just a minute. Okay. And just a reminder to everybody else, uh, you can listen to Sarah on the AAPC podcast through your favorite podcast app. Just search the AAPC podcast. And if you're listening to us, you can watch Sarah tell her story on the AAPC YouTube channel. Just search for AAPC and you'll find her there. And we thank you so much again, Sarah, and we will talk to you later. All Bye, right, everybody. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye, everyone. Bye.